Hello everybody and now we are here. We are at the end of the City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology 60th Anniversary Edition edited by Lawrence Ferlinghetti. The longest title of any book in the history of forever. So our job now is to go through the last 20 poems in here and kind of tell you what I think of them. And what I will say right off the bat, they seem more important than anything else in this book. And I don't just mean like, oh, this is an important poem because of blah, blah, blah. It's like what they're talking about is important. The things they, um, the topics they're talking about have a sense of urgency to them. They um, are very political um, for the most part. It's just like, like Ernesto Cardinal. Ernesto Cardinal. Oh, we'll say that. From Nicaragua with Love. Um, and the poem in here is Room 5600. Fucking really, really good. This probably isn't the exact um, idea that the poem has, but almost that, like, the room is the room, and everyone who has been through it, all the things that have happened in the room, are almost as if they are ghosts that have... Um, that now dwell inside this room. And, I, and again, I don't think that's exactly what it was intended to talk about, but, um, and it's very, um, economical and political. Um, it's just, it's really good. The Pasolini poems in here, um, Roman evening and sex consolation for misery. Um, not bad, not bad. Simon, um, Vincanog, Noog, um, and his poem in here is really good. I like that a lot. Kisses from Another Dream, Antonio Porta. The age of unhappiness has arrived, or is it? And I'm walking out on Rome. Those two, um, there was something about the first poem of his in here that I didn't latch on to right away. And when I was reading it, I'm like, oh, my, what is happening? Do I like this? Do I not like this? But I'm walking out on Rome was so good that I went back and read the poem before it and um, had a better appreciation for it, I guess, is the best way to say it. Um, and then we have Adam Cornford, The Outer Limits. This was actually kind of um, a bizarre poem because it's talking about a very specific Outer Limits episode and um, about how a phone call interrupted the episode. But it's, like, very specific. And if you know The Outer Limits, you will know what episode um, that he's referring to. So it was kind of neat. Um, La Loca. Why I Choose Black Men for My Lovers. This was good, but... I'm going to caveat the fuck out of this. Um, there is... And I'm probably... Uh, I don't even know if this is something I should talk about. But what was kind of interesting about this is that I know all these places. And, like, um, even though many many years have passed since this poem was written and my experience in the same areas of um like the san fernando valley and west la and um sunset the whole fucking thing there are still some very similar things here but um why i choose black men for my lovers is the name of the poem um there are, and I'm sure at the time this was written, it um, kind of hits harder. It probably hit harder then than it would now because 
Um, I'm sure for a lot of you, you would be going like, well, why wouldn't you? Like, so the fuck what? Like, okay. Like, but what this poem is more of is why um, she can't stand white dudes. And um, I think with that idea of the poem, that would probably fly a lot better today um, than it did then. But I know the, um, the shock value would be, in 1967, would be why I choose black men for my lovers. Does, does any of this make sense? Um, and a lot of it is very... A lot of the stuff she's saying is very generalization heavy, which whenever anyone starts generalizing it, um, for me, even if you're trying to make a point, if you start over generalizing, I feel like you're doing the exact same thing that the opposition is doing. Like overgeneralization is a fucking horrible thing and it is not always accurate. And when you just lump everything in with absolute statements, um, covering a whole group of people, it's, it's very tacky to me. So even though there are parts of this, I liked looking at it today. I don't think it aged. Well, um, is the best way to, um, Put that across. I would love to hear someone else's like take on that. And then we have Vladimir Mayakovsky. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, it's all right. Um, and then there's some Jack Kerouac stuff. Again, I just don't dig all the God stuff and religious undertones in his work. And I mean, you can't even like he has a poem here about flies. And you're like, oh, flies. Okay. We have one, two, three, four, five, six little stanzas here, and four out of the six are about God on a poem called Flies. For fuck's sake. We get it. Daisy Zamora, Riverbed of Memory. Um, downpour and report on the protests in front of the United States Embassy. Yeah, this is another one of those poems that feels like it has importance beyond... Um, the majority of the things in this book. So it's pretty good. And I don't know, like when you are reading something from someone that has more like social or political importance, you, I think you give it a little more like you're like, well, this might not be the best poem I've ever read, but God damn it. Like I really feel for these people or I really feel for this situation. So there's all that. Rosero Miro, I think is the name. Um, Angel in the Deluge and Conversation in Front of a Helicopter. Um, that actually was kind of interesting. I kind of liked that one. Um, more Kerouac. Um, the Scripture of the Golden Eternity. Fuck's sake, dude. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I know you have a huge fan base. I know, I know, I know. Um, I just I just don't get it the same. Um, then we have Alberto Blanco. And, um, oh yeah, I really was having a hard time with that. Ugh. I think this poem with Kerouac, um, it's like... You know when you see those movies by directors that um, have reached legendary status and the movie almost becomes masturbatory? Like, it's like, why didn't somebody take this from them and edit the fuck out of this? Like, why is this movie four hours? Like, what is going on right now? Like, I got a lot of that from this poem of his. Um, Music in the Age of Iron by Blanco. Oh, Poem Scene in a Motel Fan. That might have been my favorite poem in this whole book. I really dig that. Like, just like the whole, like, the blades are moving, but the center of the fan is still, even though it's moving. 
but it's still compared to the blades of the fan. Um, and then he tries to like kind of, um, I don't know why I said this is my favorite poem in the whole book. It, I really like it. But then he tries to like take the metaphor and um, put it into practice, like into the life of a poet. And I don't know if that works as well. But um, I loved the bits of just the fan. That was great. Julio Cortazar. That stuff's okay. I like... Um, yeah, I, that one I kind of fell off of. Yeah, I, I'd say it's okay. And then Dino Campana, the Chimera. That's okay. Journey to Montevito. I like this one a lot better than the one before it. And then in Thunderling Twilight, Thundering Twilight was okay. I wish I had better um, things to tell you about this, but I felt like if I broke it down into three videos, I'd be able to get more into each thing, but um, I'm still just kind of, eh. But there's some good lines in some of these things. So we have Jack Hirschman, um, front lines. We have Icon, I guess is how you say it, and the Unnameable. And the Icon poem is of Allen Ginsberg. And so again, we're a bunch of dudes writing poems about the dudes we know and the dudes we hang out with and how cool these dudes are and how cool it is to be dudes doing dude shit in the dude fucking neighborhood so fucking like I just and it's probably like that poem in it in a vacuum is probably fine but because I'm reading a book where a bunch of dudes are doing this thing it's fucking I, I uh, <clears throat> and then we have somebody whose name I cannot pronounce um Semizdin Memidinovic out of the book called Nine Alexandrias. This is okay. He has a poem in here called Pound, about Ezra Pound, which I thought was kind of funny. Now, the most interesting thing about A Door Upright in the Wind, the most interesting thing about it, it's a very short poem, but um, it was written, like at the bottom, it says like, Written between Alexandria, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Los Angeles, Chicago, Philadelphia, Alexandria. September 19th through the 28th, 2001. And it's like, oh. Like, did it really take you that long to write this poem? Or, like, do you not remember and you wrote it in a notebook while you were on this trip? And so it could have been written in any of these places... Um, yeah, so that, that was like the thing that kind of, I thought was interesting. Camus Daoud, world music, um, this type of poetry, I don't know if this is considered list poetry, but it's like, this many of this, this many of that, this many of this. And we go down this whole long list of all these many, 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 many things and one black chopstick. I am not um, a fan of that kind of stuff. Uh, Christina Piri Rossi. These are good. Um, I really dug these. First Journey and Midnight Barcelona Metro. I really dug these a lot. Um, First Journey is really, really strong. Um, and Midnight Barcelona Metro. Um, I, would, I would pick this book up and read it. I really dug it. And then we have more Philip La Mancha. And... Um, I, again, don't like it. So he hit, he had one good chunk for me that I really dug. Not into this other stuff. Um, and then finally, the last poet in here is David Meltzer. Not to be confused with Dave Meltzer. Um, but this is David Meltzer. And it's kind of a cool poem called When I Was a Poet. 
and um, it's very reflective, and I kind of liked where it was going. Um, it is long, but um, I dug it. I thought it was okay. So, um, City Lights Pocket Poets Anthology, I very much recommend it, especially if you want a um, basically like 60 years of um, poetry that is in the City Lights flavor um, from around the world for the last 60 years. This is a great little like, this is what's been going on for the last 60 years in poetry dig it kind of thing so um this book was on sale on their website for 15 bucks um and it lists for like uh 21.95 so um and that was like this week i saw it for that much so pick it up if you don't already have it it's a amazing little book and it's beautiful and feels good in your hand so with that said um I recommend it. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.